Hey everybody, TJ Grant here with Quad Poly, and today we're going to learn how to do this inside of Fusion. Now, this project is done entirely with the built-in tools inside of Fusion. You can follow along with this tutorial in either Fusion 9 or Resolve 15 as the node structure is exactly the same. So with that being said, let's get started. So once you're in Resolve 15, load up a new project and when you get to this screen, right click inside the media tool and let's choose new Fusion composition. Now inside this dialog box we can set the duration clip name let's just call it cartoon explosion and the duration uh, let's just make it an even 10 seconds it may not take 10 seconds but we'll just give it 10 seconds change the frame rate to 30 and let's just go ahead and create and what we can do is drag this into the timeline and then let's click on the fusion tab so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to make use of a fast noise shader. So if you right click, go to add tool, go to generator and click on fast noise. And then what you could do is you can either drag it up into the viewport there or since this is viewport one and viewport two, you can click on the one or the two key to display it into either viewport. Okay. So inside of this viewport, we're not gonna do anything to this node just yet. I wanna load in a couple more nodes and then we'll work on those. So the next node that we're gonna create is add tool 3D and we wanna get a shape 3D. And then another tool and we wanna get the UV map 3D. All right, and let's go ahead and click and drag these into the inputs. And then for the shape 3D, click on the node and let's just see what it looks like in the viewport up here. Next, let's change the shape to a sphere. And now let's go ahead and edit this fast noise node. So click on there. And the first thing that we're gonna do is we want it to make, look, make it look like a cartoon. So that usually means that we need some well-defined edges. And the way that we're gonna do that is very simple. Let's go ahead and up the contrast. Now, the default only goes to five, but like a lot of tools inside of Fusion, you can go beyond the default. So in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and crank that up to 200, all right? And now you'll notice the nice clean lines. Next, I wanna just adjust the detail a little bit because I do want a little more variety so this is gonna give some shape and appeal to our explosion. So over in the viewport with the shape 3D, um, let's right click inside of here, go to 3D options, and let's just select lighting just so that we could see what's going on a little bit easier. And if we move this around, you'll notice that there's this hard edge here. Now one thing that you could do inside the fast noise is that you can set the seethe rate, but you'll notice that there's still that hard edge along there even when I am animating it along. So that's why we place this UV map node in here. So if we take a look at that now, what we can do is change the type of mapping. All right, so in this one is our original shape 3D, and this one is our UV mapped. And you can come over here and you can select different ways to map the object. You may think that spherical would work, but it would still give us the same result because the default is in fact a spherical. But the best case is just use the planar for this. So if I were to come through here and see this now, you'll notice that there really isn't any glaring edges there, all right? Now, you'll also notice that it is, in fact, mirroring through the center, but that's okay because we're gonna just be animating this in a random way, and so that's, that's good enough. The, the best thing that we don't wanna do is have this edge. So the next, we're gonna add a Displace 3D node. So Add Tool, 3D, and Displace 3D. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna use a black and white image to displace the geometry on here. So we're gonna connect these nodes together and we already have a black and white image from our fast noise. So let's take the output of that and plug it into the green arrow on the Displace 3D. 
And then what I like to do is just hold down Alt on a wire and create a little elbow. And then that way I can just keep my node graph kind of clean. And then hit two and you'll notice that it goes crazy. And that's because the scale is a little too high for what we need it for. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and bring this all the way down and don't be surprised, you may have to use very, very low values when you're using this place 3D. So we're gonna set this to right around point, point, point 0.003 uh, just for right now, maybe even less, maybe, maybe a little more. Okay, so the next step is that we're going to create a particle emitter. So right click, add tool, go to particles, and go to P emitter. And then we need a renderer, a particle renderer. So go to P render. And let's go ahead and tie these together. And let's just take a look at what we have. So I'm going to zoom in. And right now, it just spawns a bunch of points. Next, we need to add a Replicate 3D because we want to replicate this mesh at all these points. So we're going to go to Add Tool, 3D, and go to Replicate 3D. And let's go ahead and tie this into here. Next, let's drag this into the green arrow. So what we need to do at this point is let's go back to the P emitter. Let's change the style to a blob. All right, and that's going to help replicate this mesh at all those points. Now we want to add a spin to this because right now as we scroll through it, they all get spawned and they don't rotate and nothing changes. So the way that we have to do this if you're using particles is that you need to come over to the alignment inside the Replicate 3D node and you need to change this to TBN aligned. And what that's going to do is if I come over to the particle emitter now, and let's go over to rotation or spin, let's change that X variance, and let's just start rotating that. And you'll notice now that the particles actually will spin. All right, and so let's just make it a low number. Let's go to five in the X variance, five in the Y variance, and Z variance of five as well. And now if we hit play, you can see that it rotates randomly. So now that we have the spin variances on, let's make sure that when our particles spawn into the scene that their rotation is already varied at the very beginning. Because as you can see right now, they're just being copied because they have no rotation that's being varied right now. So let's just change the X, Y, and the Z variance to just random numbers. So now, when they spawn in, they'll just spawn in at a random rotation, and then they'll start to spin from there, as we can see in this. Okay, so now that we have our mesh set up, our displacement, and this uh, particle emitter here, um, let's set up the rest of the scene, and then we'll go in and we'll stylize the look and feel of the particles themselves. So the easiest way to do that is let's go over here, let's add tool. Since we are working in a 3D scene, we need to put a merge 3D in here. Next, let's add a camera from 3D, camera 3D. And then one more, we're going to add in the renderer 3D. So let's take a look at our scene in the Merge 3D. Let's go ahead and hit one on the keyboard just so that we can see what the scene looks like. So we can see that we have our camera now. And then in the Renderer 3D, let's put that in Viewport 2. And so I'm going to select the camera node. And all we're going to do is just pull it back. All right. And you'll see it looks really weird right now. But uh, we'll get that fixed here in a second. So inside of the render 3D, let's change that to OpenGL render. Now that we have the overall scene set up, let's go ahead and stylize this particle emitter. So we're going to click on the P emitter node. And if you go over to the style tab, the paintbrush with the swoop on there, uh, go to color controls and go down to color over life. 
make sure you have clicked on the triangle and let's just go ahead and stylize the way this looks so this is going to be the beginning of our explosion so we'll just kind of make that a light orange or even closer to a yellow and then if you click the bar you can add another point in the color so let's drop this down too all right and then for the color variants um, I'm just going to increase the red and the green because red and green on RGB makes uh, affects the yellow essentially. So now if I scroll through this, you'll see that the colors now run together. Okay, so the next thing that we need to do is actually set the life. And the way that we're going to do that is under the emitter here okay so first off we don't need 10 being spawned let's go ahead and just do four okay and then the for the lifespan since it's a bright flash right so we only really need just a few uh, frames so uh, let's just go ahead and make this about 20 frames and then uh, we'll adjust the lifespan variance We'll just set that to a low number, and then now if we watch the animation, you can see it goes away pretty quickly. Then what we're going to do is we're going to change the scale, all right? Because right now it spawns in all at the same size, so let's go ahead and change the scale over life as well. So under size controls, let's make sure we're on frame zero here. And under size over life, this is just a simple graph. Let's go ahead and just adjust the curve here. And we'll bring that way down. So it looks similar to that. And now if we watch it, it will grow and then it will shrink. Now, the next thing that we need to do is under the number here even though it's lasting for 20 frames we don't want it to continuously emit all right we want initial the initial number to emit and then we don't want it to in, emit anymore so let's go ahead and set the keyframe and then let's go over to frame number five and let's just set that to zero and let's go back and now let's watch the animation not going to emit anymore and then it's just going to scale down to nothing so now that we have the initial blast we need to create the smoke and the easiest way to do that is to select all of the nodes that make up the actual explosion itself and copy and paste it and we're going to create the smoke from this group of nodes as well so let's go from the replicate 3d node let's drag it into the merge 3d and then let's take a look at the replicate 3d node just by hitting one on the keyboard now it will look exactly the same but we're going to stylize it now so the way that we're going to do that is let's go to the particle emitter and let's just go ahead and change the color of that and instead of the red variance let's drop that back down to zero and the color over life let's make that black and then let's make this a light gray. Under the size controls, let's make it just a little bit bigger so we can see it pop a little bit more. Let's go back to the life and especially the keyframes. You'll notice that the keyframes have already been saved for the number, so that's totally fine but we're going to change the lifespan because we want the smoke to last longer than the explosion so we'll set the lifespan to be about 40. all right so let's watch it explode there comes the smoke and then it will shrink in size so the next thing that we should do is make sure that the smoke kind of fans out a little bit as it travels along so what we could do also inside the particle emitter here is let's change the velocity and let's add just a little bit of angle variance to all this and let's set the velocity up very very small 
set that back down to zero. So now let's go ahead and watch this animation play through. You can see it kind of moves out now and then it'll shrink back down. So now let's go ahead and also inside our particle emitter, let's change the random rotation where it starts to not be exactly the same as the other particle emitter. So we're just going to change the variance there. The next step that we should do is see how jagged these edges are. They're very angular. Let's go ahead and smooth some of that out. So what we're going to do is inside both of these shape 3D nodes here, all we need to do is up the resolution or the subdivision of those spheres. And the reason why they are angular like that is because the displacement map that we're using, if it doesn't have enough geometry to displace, it's going to look very uh, polygonal. So we're just going to add some more subdivisions, kind of smooth everything out. Let's go ahead and do that for the other one as well. So it's a little more smooth. A little more rounded all right and then the next step that we want to do is let's if you remember in the fast noise we do have a seethe rate and if we change some of that we can also add a secondary animation to the actual particles themselves so that noise if I go into the seethe rate that will animate over time. So if we go ahead and set that up at a decent level too, that way as we move along the timeline you can see it seething there. And that's just going to add a little more variety and a little more style to the overall animation. So for the final steps in this tutorial, let's go ahead and add in the glow. So what we're going to do is right click Add Tool Go to Blur, and then let's add that glow in. And then what we're going to do is take a look at it in the viewport one. And what I like to do is right click Options and take off the checker underlay, just so that we don't see the transparency. And you'll notice that the smoke is very bright. So let's go back into the particle emitter for the smoke. Let's separate that down, make it easier for our cells visually and under the style tab just go over to your color over life controls make sure you click on the arrow and let's just bring that down because we want to have make sure that, that smoke is dark and then let's just scrub through a little bit in the animation here just so that we can see what's going on all right and then back underneath our glow i don't really want the glow to affect the alpha I just really want it to affect only where there is color on the screen. And then this part is really up to you. You can increase the amount of glow that it has. You can take it down, um, set the radius. All right, finally, let's make sure from our glow node, let's connect that to the media out because we are working in resolve here. And if we just go back into the edit of the timeline, you can now see our fusion effect is ready to be animated and rendered out. Well, that about wraps up our tutorial for today. If you like this tutorial and would love to see more, please like and subscribe to my channel. And with that being said, I'll see you all on the next tutorial.